Hollywood still predominantly uses the male gaze in many films. According to Laura Mulvey, male gaze typically objectifies women because the control of the camera comes from factors such as the assumption of heterosexual men as the default target audience for most film genres. Outside of Hollywood, there have been renowned films that deconstruct the male gaze in a society that carves out their expectations of female bodies and gender roles. The Czech New Wave film Daisies and the Taiwanese New Wave film The Wayward Cloud are surrealist, avant-garde, and counter-cinemas that deconstruct male gaze with two different approaches on storytelling. Daisies features two young women both named Marie. The girls are fashionably dolled up and act like dolls. The Czech word panna translates to both virgin and doll. The two Maries decide to rebel since everything's going bad in this world. Daisies embraces female identification against oppressive structures of culture and modernity that has no sympathy for the limitation of gender roles, and at the same time, it also demonstrates that suppressive structures can collapse upon themselves. The Wayward Cloud is set in a city in a state of severe drought where water has become scarce and people drink watermelon juice as a source of hydration. The main characters are Lee, a young porno actor, and Chen, a museum attendant. The film has been criticized by many as soft porn because the female characters lack independent sexuality and are constantly degraded. However, it is not all about female objectification. Sex is never connected with pleasure, romance, or intimacy, but more like an inability to make genuine connection from both sides. Marie 1 and 2 break away from the stereotypical gender roles and protest against the patriarchal society. They go on dates with rich older men who all try to win the two young girls over with their money and social status. The girls use them to get free food and drink, but never give them what the men truly desire. Chen desires to take control of her own sexuality, and her craving for physical closeness with Lee is seen in the adult DVD shop. She displays more aggressive attention towards him, but her efforts are never reciprocated. He can only perform sexually when there is a camera. In both films is that the foods invoke sexual organs and the pleasures of the sex act. The two Maries rebel through a compulsive and excessive frenzy of eating and drinking. They look for food at every location and especially crave yummy meat and chew on pickles, sausages, and bananas. They also make a mockery of males. One man becomes helpless at the mere sight of a naked female body. As she poses, he ravishes her with lustful praise, but all she cares for is food. While a man confesses his undying love on the phone, the girls cut up phallic shaped foods. Not only do they cut up foods, they also joyfully cut themselves up as an act of cutting the masculine perception of women. In the wayward cloud, water symbolizes something that in general holds higher values. Imagery of flowers symbolize women who can blossom beautifully if they are watered, but it is the time of drought where water is severely lacking. Lee drinks watermelon juice while he is filming on the set, but not when Chen gives him a glass of the juice. To him, watermelon juice is sticky and unclean and needs to be washed with water. Watermelon has replaced water as a source of hydration. Also, touching the female body is replaced by a watermelon. Real sex has been replaced by fake and fetishized sex. It shows his inability to connect with women in real life. Them cooking and eating a meal together is a representation of Chen's false hope. She longs for a physical and emotional relationship with him, but he is unable to fulfill any of it. Just like the shadows on the wall and pretend pregnancy, everything that she hopes is a mere illusion. In the last scene, the two Maries begin to savagely feast on the banquet, ignoring utensils and drinking glass after glass of wine. This is soon punctuated by a frenzied food fight. They have a fashion show on the table and swing on an enormous glass chandelier. After the banquet, the girls are thrown into a deep body of water as a punishment for their unwomenly behaviors. People on the boat refuse to save them because they are spoiled. It's society's rejection of this type of unfeminine demeanor, a denial of subversive behavior of the lesser sex. It also shows that the strict structures of society leave no room for liberal expression. Chen finds the Japanese porn actress passed out in the elevator. The discovery of the unconscious actress leads Chen to find out Lee's job, and she helps a crew member to move her body to the porn set where she meets Lee. Chen's desire to be connected with Lee is destroyed like the watermelon on the floor. The two Maries are given a second chance. They arrive back in the dining room dressed in shards of newspaper and start to clean up the place. Despite their efforts to fit in the society's gender roles, they are still met with an untimely death caused by the collapse of the large elaborate chandelier. Back to the wayward cloud, Chen watches from behind the grill with shock as the porn crew and Lee film with the unconscious girl. At the end of the film, Chen and Lee's delayed sexual encounter is finally made. 
but it does not fulfill her romantic and sexual fantasy. The objectification of women displayed by the actress in Chen is a rather disturbing and sad portrait of contemporary love. Daisies and the wayward cloud were made almost 40 years apart, but they both deconstruct male gaze. By doing so, they successfully criticize the objectification of female body in a society that disallows any possibility of feminine strength and individuality.